What's up guys, this is Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and what I thought we would do today is have a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ Match within Studio One. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with what EQ Match is and what it is specifically that it does, is it allows you to take an EQ curve from a source audio signal and we can extract that EQ curve and we can apply that onto another audio signal. So some of the uses for this would be, uh, let's say that you were working on a project or let's say that you've received the project and you're adding to something and you're recording an extra verse on a track that you've done and you don't have the same preamp or you don't have the same uh, microphone that the other studio was using. So what you could then do is you could choose the source that you want to match to and then you could apply that EQ curve onto either the tracks that you've recorded or the tracks that you received from the other studio. So let's have a really quick uh, look at this workflow practice. So what I've got here is I've got a voiceover. Now it's the same voiceover, but it's mic'd with two different microphones. So the top one here is an SM7B, which is gonna sound identical to the microphone that I'm on now. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that really quickly. In this audio example, we're gonna be having a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match to match two different mics. Okay, the next example directly underneath it is an Audix hypercardioid microphone, but that's mic'd just above my head uh, over top, and I've kind of made sure to capture that as differently as possible. So that's actually going through an ADL 600, and I've changed the impedance to try to get it a little bit darker here. Now, you're going to hear a little bit of room ambience in this, but uh, you'll get an idea that it's a different signal here for sure. So here's the original again in this audio example. And now let's switch to the Audix version. In this audio example, we're gonna be having a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match to match two different microphones recorded through two different preamps. Okay, so the same source there, but recorded with two different microphones. Now there's a little bit of ambience in the overhead, but that's okay. I think we'll be able to get the idea across here. So the first thing that you need to do when you're working with any type of EQ match thing is we need to determine uh, which one we wanna to match to. So in this particular case, I wanna to try to match the bottom signal, which is the darker dollar of the two, to my top signal, which is my SM7B going through RC500, which is a brilliant solid state preamp made by Personas. So I'm gonna drag the FabFilter Pro Q2 plugin to the bottom track, which is a track that I'm gonna be changing the EQ curve on. Now the next thing we need to do uh, when using the EQ match is we need to activate this side chain. So now what this is allowing uh, the FabFilter Pro Q2 plugin to do is it's allowing it to listen to the sidechain. So what we can now do is from any track, could be the same track or it could be an entirely different track, we can send to that sidechain. So now I'm going to go back to my original track, which is my SM7B. Let me just actually, let's pin this plugin so that it stays active. Uh, I'm going to go back to this track and then under the sidechain, Let's choose that plugin. So here's a side chain, Fab Filter Pro Q2. All right, so we're sending out to that side chain now, and I'm sending out at zero dB, so unity gain. So now if we hover our cursor just down here and I click the EQ match curb, you'll notice that we have two different options here. So the first option we have is a side chain record, and the next one is an input. So I'm gonna actually pause the input for now because you can record these. Uh, these don't have to be linked to time. For instance, you can record a snapshot so uh, of either the side chain or the input to apply. So I pause the input and I'm gonna record the side chain. So I'm just gonna click play. In this audio example, we're gonna be having a look at using we're FabFilter recording the Pro Q2's chain. EQ match to match two different microphones recorded through two different. Okay, so you kinda of gotta keep your eye on this EQ curve and at some points it might be moving. So if I hop into the mic and I get my proximity up, it's obviously gonna have a lot more low end content, but you kinda of gotta let it average out. So you choose your program material and find an average EQ curve. So now that I've got that EQ curve, I'm going to pause the side chain. Now I'm going to activate the input, which is you activate it by unpausing it, seeing this red record mode here. And just to make things uh, easy to understand here, let's switch over to our input track, which is the track that the uh, Pro Q2 is on, and let's record this. In this audio example, we're going to be having a look at using Notice these white lines Pro here. Q2's EQ match to match two different microphones recorded through two different preamps. Okay, 
So I've just kind of waited for the EQ curve of the input track. The input track is whatever track the Fab Filter Pro Q2 is on. I'm waiting for that to just kind of settle down. And the minute I saw it settle down, I stop my playback. Now, you'll notice here that we've got three different curves. First of all, we've got a curve here that's in white that's showing that we've recorded the input EQ curve. We've paused our sidechain EQ curve. That's the one in red here. That's already been recorded. And then we have our difference curve. So this is the difference that Pro-Q2 is going to apply to our input track in order to get it to match our sidechain send. And again, that could be from the exact same track, but in this particular case, I'm using two different audio clips and two different tracks just to make it easy. So the next thing we do here is we just have to click the match icon. Now you can see that it's applied these nodes in this EQ curve. If you'd like this to be more detailed, we can dial up the amount of nodes and watch what's happening here. It's put in a lot of different nodes there. It's got a really detailed EQ curve. And then if we back off a little bit here, you'll notice they start to disappear. So moving it up, there's one. There would be just, a, you know, a really quick way to get it in the ballpark. But we have, uh, you know, oh, sorry, there's two. There's one for the low end. But we have more stuff happening. So I'd like to capture this as well. So let's move this up. And this dip here, you know what, we can probably move it back to somewhere around here and still get a great match. Okay, so now that this is done here, I'm just going to click the finish tab. And now we've got our EQ curve. Now one of the interesting things about the way this works is that if you want to make an adjustment to this EQ curve, let's say that in general, you find that it's a good match, but it might be a little excessive on the amounts of boost or cut that were applied. We can basically select all of these nodes here, and then if we head over to the gain, we can offset the amount of cut or boost on these individual nodes. So there would be an example of the same EQ curve, but a little less drastic. Or we can increase it as well. So let's go ahead and really quickly, let's listen to an AB. And I'm, just, I'm not going to talk, I'm going to swap between them. Keep your eye on the solo here to see which track we're listening to. Obviously, the SM7B is what we want to match to. And this track over here is the one that we're applying the EQ curve to. In this audio example, we're going to be having a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match to match two different microphones recorded through two different preamps. In this audio example, we're going to be having a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match to match two so you can see that's done an absolutely phenomenal job. Now we do have a little bit of ambience in the background there, but like I said, most of the time that you'd be using this type of thing, hopefully you'd have a similar microphone proximity and hopefully you wouldn't be dealing with the unnatural ambience that's coming into the equation. So here's the next thing that I wanna take a look at here. Um, we want this workflow to really kind of integrate into our already existing workflow. So you might not wanna have two separate vocal tracks uh, on your project. You might say, well, hey, you know what? Um, I just wanted to do another take so that I have some more choices for comping or um, I want to integrate this into my project in some way. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm using the Pro-Q2 EQ match is I will actually render that result into the audio file if I know that that's my intent. So here's what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, EQ curve over here and I'm going to copy this. Okay. So we've copied this, this static snapshot of this EQ curve that the EQ match gave us. Now, the next thing that I want to do here is let's just close this for a second. I'm going to disable this plugin. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to hold down the option, Alt on a PC. And I'm going to drag the actual FabFilter Pro Q2 plugin onto the event itself. So we're going to turn this into an event effect. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this right now, highlight it. Okay, now what we do is we paste that same EQ curve. Now what we do is we render that same EQ curve. Now we've rendered the actual EQ curve into the event itself. Now you've got a couple different choices here. Um, you can leave this as an event effect if you ever wanted to unwrap that, or you could bounce it if you wanted to just commit to that. I'm going to, in this particular case, uh, just keep it easy. I'm just going to bounce this right now. So now this has become its own file. 
And now let's say that we wanted to be able to use this with our original track, which is a top track. So something that I would consider doing is I'd go to my top track here, which currently has one layer in it. Let's assume this is a different take. We're going to add a new layer. So now we've got layer one and layer two. And now what I would do is I would take this event right over here and I'm just going to make a copy of this. And now I can take this track and you know what, let's just take this, let's mute it and let's just hide it. We don't need to see that. So we know that we have that backed up and then we come back to here. I can switch between layer one and two if I wanted to. But what I would really like to be able to do is let's go to expand layers. And now I can actually comp between these two layers. So let's just do some arbitrary comps right here and let's see how this ends up sounding. Now keep in mind, we have that ambience is going to be a little bit different, but hopefully this works out. In this audio example, we're going to be having a look at using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match to match two different microphones recorded through two different preamps. Brilliant. So that's using FabFilter Pro Q2's EQ match in Studio One. I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.